As Dad would have it, all that stood between the Tafe family line and extinction that early autumn in the late 1930s was a carton of peanut butter cheese crackers. There they were, shivering and hungry, stranded in an unheated fishing cabin in the wilds of western Michigan. Ned, my dad, Bud, my Uncle Gerald, and Bob, the youngest of the brothers, and my grandfather, Tafe, who had forgotten to pack the box of food for their fishing trip in the UP of Michigan. This was one of the stories my father told about the fishing trips that he took with his father and brothers, taking the ferry from Chicago across Lake Michigan into western Michigan and the Upper Peninsula in the 1930s. And it was the story I recalled as I held a large format negative up to the light and discerned a fly fisherman silhouetted against a river. My dad, I wondered? I was going through a box of old negatives, just the negatives, no prints or proofs, some in their original photo finishing envelopes from labs in Chicago. They'd sat on a shelf in a cupboard of the house we grew up in, alongside unused window fans, Christmas ornaments, an old slide projector, and plastic files of slides my father used in his work. He was a geographer and a teacher, and most of the slides were maps he used in his lectures and books. I knew Dad had been an amateur photographer, as well as a fisherman, but we'd never seen any of his photographs, with one exception. One photograph is sort of iconic to me. When Dad would take us to visit Grandma Tafe in a Rogers Park apartment in Chicago, I'd see it standing on a little side table next to a pair of Crystal Dove bookends, a photo of a rather handsome man and a little boy standing on the deck of a boat. The man, my grandfather Tafe, is posed with a cigarette held elegantly in one hand, the other thrust insouciantly into his pocket. That graceful carelessness, Dad told us, was carefully assumed for the picture, and my grandfather was rather taken with it, thinking it captured his uncanny resemblance to William Powell. Now, as I held each negative up to the light, I was strangely excited to see new reversed images of my grandfather, who died young at 55, and whom I'd never known, and of my grandmother, my father as a young man, and my two uncles as little boys. I spotted the William Powell photo. In another, I saw what had to be my grandmother in much the same spot on the deck of a boat. I realized from the lightness of it in the negative that my grandmother's hair must be dark. I could only remember her with snow white hair cut short and brushed back behind her ears. I had recently returned to photography, having been distracted from it after college by graduate school and then work. It was becoming a means of saving my sanity a break from teaching and marking grad student research papers. My husband had built a darkroom in my basement and I spent many happy hours immersed in the rituals, smells, and discovery of developing, enlarging, and printing my own photographs. I'd smuggled Dad's negatives out of the family home and decided to print them for him as a gift. Over the next couple of months, I made the proofs and experienced all over again the excitement of seeing the now positive images of my dad's family in the 30s. I made four sets of the photographs, one for me and one for each of the brothers. They were beautiful. Two of them, not technically the best, were nonetheless my favorites. They're two rather fuzzy pictures of my grandfather Tafe. In one, he sits in the rowboat holding up his catch. Instead of the pleased with himself expression my father has in a similar picture, my grandfather has a doleful look on his face. When I saw it for the first time, I was reminded of the stories my father would tell of his dad's characteristic mournful expression. Once dad told us, a perfect stranger, drunk but concerned, approached my grandfather, pinched his cheek and counseled him, cheer up buddy, can't be all that bad. In the second photograph, Grandfather Tafe sits in an armchair in a cabin, perhaps the site of the peanut butter cheese crackers weekend, smoking his pipe and adjusting his fishing rod. I didn't know he smoked a pipe. 
The window shades are drawn and the walls are of unfinished wood. His shirt sleeves are rolled up to his elbow. His arms are my father's arms. And yet he's wearing a tie. I completed the albums in time to surprise Dad for Father's Day, which we were celebrating at my sister-in-law's A-frame cabin on the shore of Lake Michigan in Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore. On the evening we celebrated Dad, he was truly touched and delighted at the album, and as he paged through it, he described some of the places in the UP I had just photographed as well as the other loved spots in western Michigan and Wisconsin, including pictured rocks and the Muskegon River. He told new and some familiar stories and identified his favorite. It was his dad, pausing as he boards a fishing boat, jacket slung over his arm, looking pleased with himself. He was starting off on a fishing trip to Chesapeake Bay he'd won as a result of riding a whopper of a fishtail for a Biggest Liar contest sponsored by the Chicago Tribune. One my sisters and I love is of my dad sitting on the beach. A photo which prompted him to comment, how did a guy who started out looking like Gregory Peck end up looking like Mr. Pickwick? That weekend was a high water mark for me. At the cabin, and often since then, I've had a sense of excitement and anticipation experiencing a connection in time and place with my grandfather and father and with the rest of my family, a connection formed by the geography of the Great Lakes, as well as by photography and its communication over time and without words. That weekend was, I now know, the awakening of a sleeping part of myself through photography. <laughs>